Now that the basic flow of the fountain is configured, we can add collisions that will allow us to have the particles bounce off the granite sphere in the scene and eventually be deleted. You may ask why we would delete particles. For one simple reason. The more particles you have, the longer it takes to calculate. And at a certain point, we don't need to see the particles anymore. Once they bounce off the granite sphere and into the water, they effectively disappear. Make sure the particle flow object is selected and that the particle view dialog box is open. The first thing we want to do is test for two different collisions, one for the granite sphere and a second for the fountain water. The reason why we want to have two separate tests is because when particles bounce off of the granite sphere, we want them to go to a new event that will create additional particles. The second test will determine when the particles land in the fountain water. That will allow us to route those particles to an event that will delete the particles. From the operators list, click and drag the MP collision operator to the bottom of the event in our particle flow. Click the new MP collision operator. In the MP collision parameters, click the add button. This allows us to click directly on the granite sphere in the fountain cam viewport. Now click the sphere and you'll notice that it is added to the deflectors list. Select the test true if particles option and make sure that the collides option is chosen. Click and drag a second MP collision operator below the first one. Click the second collision operator. This time, click Add, and then select the fountain water object. The fountain water object is a transparent object, but if you click in a blue area of the fountain, it will be the first object selected. Again, Select both the Test True If Particles option and the Collides option. That completes the first event. Now we need to create an event for the particles that will spawn when the water hits the sphere. Click and drag a Spawn Test Event to an open area underneath the initial event. This will create a new spawn event that contains a spawn operator as well as a display operator. Click the spawn operator in the new event. In the spawn rate and amount group, select the once option. Set the offspring number to 2 and set the variation percentage to 40. Expand the sync by dropdown and select particle age. This will create two particles for every one particle that collides with the sphere. In the speed group, choose the inherited option to set the speed to be inherited from its parent particle. We want to leave the inherited number set to 100. Set the variation percentage to a value of 10% and set the divergence to a value of 30. Since the particles are bouncing off of the sphere, we want to set a speed by surface so we can enhance the bounce of the particles off of the sphere. Next, click and drag a new speed by surface operator into the second event beneath the spawn operator. Select the speed by surface event, expand the speed by surface dropdown, and select Set Speed Once if it is not already selected. Set the speed value to 4 feet and the variation to 6 inches. Click the Add button and choose the granite sphere to add it to the surface geometry list. From the Direction dropdown, choose Surface Normals and set the divergence value to 5. Select the display operator in the second event and change the type to lines. 
Choose the color swatch and we'll set the color to a bright yellow. Change the red value to 225, the green value to 225, and the blue value to 10. Then click OK to accept the color. Now we need to copy the MP world from the first event and instance it into the second event. That way, the particles in the first event and the particles in the second event share the same world parameters. To accomplish this, right click the MP world operator in the first event and select copy. In the second event, right click just below the speed by surface operator and choose paste instance. You should now see that both world MP operators are in italic, which indicates that they are instances of each other. Let's do the same thing with the collision for the fountain water. This time, we'll make it a regular copy. Right click the MP collision for the fountain water in the first event and select copy. Right click at the bottom of the second event and paste the MP collision operator. These are two different ways of copying and pasting operators from one event to another. Now let's create a delete event. Click and drag delete to an open area below the second event. For this event, we don't have to edit anything. We just want to delete all of the particles that are going into that event. Now, where the real power of particle flow comes in is being able to connect a test operator to a new event, which creates a flow of particles from one event to the next. From the first MP collision operator in the first event for the granite sphere, click and drag from the output of the test to the input of the second event. Then, Click and drag from the output of the MP collision for the fountain water in the second event to the input for the third event in order to delete the particles. Lastly, drag from the MP collision operator for the fountain water in the first event down to the input of the third event. This will delete any stray particles that bounce off of the sphere and hit the water directly. To see this particle flow in action, Minimize the Particle View dialog box and click Play. However, you'll notice that it's fairly slow. Stop the animation and go back to frame zero. Let's add one last operator, a cache operator. That will allow us to cache the particle flow down to the hard drive and speed up playback dramatically. You may have to scroll to the right in the operators list. Click and drag the cache operator to the PF source event just below the render operator. This will cause the cache to work on the entire flow. Select the cache operator. In the dialog, you can see that we have quite a few options available for us for what we can cache, how we update, and how we sample the frames. To speed things up, let's sample every other frame. From the Sampling drop-down, choose every nth frame. Change the end value to 2 and select Save Cache with File. For this cache, we need to make sure we set the memory used limit to 200,000. In the Manual Update group, click Update to update the cache. Now 3ds Max will play back the animation and create a cache for the particles. This may take a few minutes, but when the animation is finished, you'll be able to scrub through the timeline with much better viewport performance.